Tonight, a new Galaxy Gear watch, finally some fashionable wearables, and LED lights that track you, and the analog version of Flappy Bird. Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 26 for Tuesday, February 18th, 2014. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by iFixit. They make electronics repair easy with all the parts and tools you'll need, plus free repair guides. For $10 off your purchase of $50 or more, go to ifixit.com slash twit and enter the code TN2 at checkout. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. A source tells The Verge that Samsung may show off new Galaxy Gear wearables at the Mobile World Congress trade show in Barcelona next week. That's wearables, plural. The original Galaxy Gear was released about six months ago and was criticized for things like poor battery life, lack of functionality, although it did beat competitors like Apple, Google, and Microsoft to market. In other gear news, USA Today is reporting that Tizen is coming to Galaxy Gear. Tizen is the mobile OS that hasn't actually reached a commercial product yet. The current gear runs Android, though, so a potential Tizen shift could signal a big change for Samsung. The company is already expected to unveil its Galaxy 5S smartphone next week in Barcelona as well. Rumors for that device include a 5.1-inch screen, a 16-megapixel camera, and a fingerprint sensor. Along with battery life and features, a common complaint of wearables is that they aren't really very good looking. A company called Cuff is trying hard to change all of that. The company is now taking pre-orders for nine different metal and leather bracelets that contain an inserted Bluetooth cuff link that can be used for simple messaging. The leather bands cost $35. The big metal cuffs cost $125, but they aren't exactly functional not very functional anyway, just yet. Currently, they can only be used for things like security, sending an SOS message to a designated contact, or a double tap to know somebody you'd like to get in touch. Visiting Terminal B at Newark Liberty International Airport anytime soon? If so, you may notice 171 recently installed LED fixtures that do more than just light up the gates. Using multiple sensors and eight video cameras around the terminal, the lights tie into a wireless network that can pinpoint traveler bottlenecks, they can read license plates, tip off staff to sus suspicious activity. The technology was developed by a company called Sensity Systems. Though the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, which operates the airport, says it will own and maintain all data collected and that for now, no other agencies have access. A law enforcement agency could obtain it, but through a subpoena or written request. Coming up, our last and final story on Flappy Bird. Eh, a girl can dream. Someone made a physical version of the game and we just got to show you how it works. But next we have Mike Schneider from Skyhook Wireless here. We're going to talk some specifics about wearables. But first, let's take a moment to thank iFixit. This episode of Tech News Tonight is brought to you by iFixit, the makers of the ProTech Toolkit. The ProTech Toolkit contains 70 tools to help you with almost any repair or project. It includes iFixit's 54-bit driver kit, standard specialty and security bits, has an ESD-safe precision tweezers, an anti-static wrist strap, opening tools to get inside any phone or notebook or tablet, a game console, it's lightweight, it's compact, it's durable, and it's the gold standard for how electronics work. From garage hackers, the CIA, the FBI, everybody uses this. But most importantly, iFixit's unique tools are used by repair technicians everywhere. It's all backed by a one-year warranty. The ProTech Toolkit is only $64.94. With iFixit, you can fix it yourself. Visit ifixit.com slash twit for all the repair parts and tools you'll need, plus free repair guides. Enter the code TN2 at checkout and you'll save $10 off any purchase of $50 or more. That's ifixit.com slash twit and use that code TN2. All right, we now are joined by Mike Schneider, Vice President of Marketing at Skyhook Wireless and Tech News Contributor for New England Cable News Boston. Hello, Mike. Hi, how are you? I am very well. Thank you for being with us. We have Thanks heard that. quite a bit uh, in this short week so far about, you know, some rumors, some news about upcoming wearables. What do you think stands out as the biggest challenge going forward? 
You hit it before. It's it, the challenge is balance. We're you know we're balancing form factor and features, and of course the biggest problem is going to be battery life, and you know balancing the features and, and and cool form factors and making it something that people want to wear. Like if you try to do too many things, you end up with that Oculus Rift, which is like this giant thing that you wear on your face and end up dragging your face kind of behind you as you go. But it does everything you want it to do. So what about? Uh... Do you have concerns with some sort of wearable device being hacked, for example? We all talk about it needs to look nice and the battery life needs to be okay, but what other implications might we need to think about if we're all starting to wear computers on our wrists? I mean, I think, you know, hacking is something that we always have to worry about, but, um, uh, you know, I'm not super worried about it. I think, like, people, most people out there are fairly responsible. Uh, I, I guess I'm from the Steve Wozniak school where I want everybody to have the privacy that they think they have. Right, right. What about, <laughs> uh, let's look at Apple, for example. Certainly not sure. the only company who seems to be doubling down on the idea of wearables, but Apple has been hiring folks, uh, patenting for what looks like something that's very medical or fitness focused. Mm -hmm. Uh, a new patent for earbuds with fitness tracking sensors is another. What, does anything stand out to you as the best way for this whole quantitative self, quantified self, to to move forward? I mean, I think that we still are trying to figure out what the best use cases are. The ones that I like best are the ones that make us healthiest. You know, if you're a runner, it's great to be able to quantify your runs. Swimmers can listen to tunes and track their heart rates and their distance and for me, I'm waiting for the quantified stomach or the quantified tongue so I can see exactly what I'm putting into my body. I think that's coming, actually. Now, I have to ask you, are you a Google Glass wearer? I am not a Google Glass wearer. No, I got my Warby Parkers on right now. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I have. A, I have I actually have a pair of those as well. <laughs> uh, Google just published a list of do's and don'ts for Google Glass users, and it's kind of mm -hmm. this whole response to a public backlash about how it's not socially acceptable or it doesn't look good. And we've all heard the term glass hole before, whether or not we <laughs> use it. Do you think smart glasses like Google Glass are on the precipice of becoming socially acceptable or is it something people are having a hard time accepting? Well, I'm not a glass hole, but I am a mass hole, so I'll talk about it. But, right. um, I think uh, <laughs> until, you know, Warby Parker releases their first smart glasses. I think that the use cases for smart glasses are, are kind of limited, like bands. Um, I don't know that it's going to be like a socially acceptable thing. I'm looking at companies like Recon or focused on using them for, you know, for skiing, you know, in, integrating them into your ski goggles and making, um, you know, making your uh, able to track everything you're doing on the mountain or when you're riding a, you know, they've got sunglasses for when you're riding a bike um, or a motorcycle. And company, one company that I'm really interested in is one called XOI, who has industrial glasses. And what they're trying to do is to scale things like um, uh, scale, like talents, like machine repairs. So basically you can send a tech in and uh, they can be working on a really complex machine and they can, you know, you can go live with the glasses and you can get, you can get expert help from somebody who knows a little bit more than you. So you think 2014 is going to be a big year for wearables then? Totally. Well, thank you so much for talking to us for a few minutes, Mike. Uh, where can folks uh, catch up with your work online? Uh, find me at Schneider Mike on Twitter, or you can go to skyhookwireless.com. All right. Well, thanks so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. All right. Moving on. Finally, as promised, Flappy Bird. Flappy Bird has not returned to the App Store. Many Flappy Bird clones have been spawned. We're not going to talk about any of that, though, because we're going to talk about an Arduino-powered analog version of Flappy Bird. The game's goal is exactly the same. You fly in between the pipes. If you touch one, then you die. But what happens is the box closes in on your hand. The real life Flappy Bird box was created by Fawn Q, whose projects can be found at qiulab.com. Well, that's it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. Please do subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Our next newscast is tomorrow at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Sarah Lane. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by cashfly.com.